here with Football Manager HD and this is going to be um, the part of the episode where we're going to where I've done the simulation through the whole season and we're gonna I'm gonna give a review of the season alongside a look at how how to see th to the new transfers make much of a difference on their teams in terms of staying up or going down or winning the league or Champions League stuff like that so that's what I'm going to get into so we're going to go straight in to the Premier League as you can see Manchester United and Hull have sacked their managers and Liverpool's boss is insecure what does that all mean this has this was the finishing table so Manchester City won the title 84 points they were seven points ahead of Arsenal who managed to grab second on goal difference from Chelsea in third and Liverpool got the last Champions League spot with 76 points 11 points out of 5th place Manchester United. Stoke overachieving well to claim 6th Everton in 7th. Spurs not a great season for them in 8th. Swansea um, decent enough season in ninth, considering they didn't have Bonnie. Newcastle in 10th fairly bang on. QPR having an excellent season in 11th. West Ham performing in real life that that would be a poor like considering how good they're doing in real life 12th isn't great for them but probably standard enough so I'm it down in 13th a little disappointing for them Leicester flying high in 14th place Sunderland pretty bang on in 15th Hull pretty bang on in 16th Burnley surviving in 17th just by three points a crucial stay up for Burnley and then as you can see West Brom in 18th spot with 36 points Crystal Palace in 19th with 34 points and rock bottom is Aston Villa bloody hell sums it up doesn't it with 33 points 6 points uh, away from survival as well so it wasn't really close for them so West Brom, Palace and Villa couldn't do enough West Brom of course without though Saido Berahino he have, of course had left uh, Burnley had uh, Deeney so we're going to see did these guys make any differences um, even with Villa did the new guys make any sort of differences I've slightly mucked it up a bit we're in the 1st of June 2015 I've got actually as you can see here I've got all the players on short lists um, on, a, on a big short list but when I for the loan players I only made them loan to the 31st of May which means all of them have returned back to their parent clubs, which comes up then as they haven't played any games this year. But that isn't the case for most of them. They've played at least some games. So in that, in, for those guys, we're just going to have to go into their career history and see how they could do, how they did. Anyway, I suppose we'll get into the uh, player statistics and see if any of the new guys really featured. Sergio Aguero, top average rating. Uh, you come to see that a lot in football manager. He really does do the business. 7.92 for him. Juan Mata, 7.88. Good from him. David Silva, 7.77. Yaya Torre, 7.71. And Hazard, 7.7. It's the three Manchester City players in that top five, which is unsurprising considering they won the league by seven points. So um, I suppose it, it kind of makes sense that they're all top in terms of appearances Jermaine Defoe played every single game fair play to that lad at such a age to play that many games is a terrific achievement Guzam uh, Colaccini, Howard and Cork all played every game I'm sure there's a fair few others yeah there's a lot of guys who actually played 38 games uh, so we're not going to go through all of them but those are the five that have come up top goal score was actually shared around well there was three um Top goal scores now. I think Aguero won the Golden Boot through uh, playing the least amount of goals, play, playing the least amount of games. Even Aguero, Balotelli, and Costa all scoring 21 goals. Balotelli, of course, a bit OP in this game. So are Liverpool in general. Uh, so I'm not surprised actually that they finished in the Champions League spots. Um, when considering in real life, really they're not going to get anywhere near there. I doubt. Danny Welbeck having a good season for Arsenal with 20 and Troy Deeney. That's quite interesting for Burnley with 19. Probably the man that has kept Burnley up, considering that they were only three points off going down. Assist-wise, we can see right at the top, possibly, and could be the reason why Arsenal did so well, is Sami Khedira getting 18 assists from 
well, possibly a central midfield role, uh, also possibly a defensive midfielder role. So Kudir really getting a lot of goals, um, or a lot of assists even, which is fantastic effort. Silva with 17, Mata 16, Eriksson 14 and Baines 13. Uh, player of the match, Baines won 11. Company, Cazorla, Eriksson, Cresswell all winning 7. And then yellow yeah, cards and red cards we don't really need to see. So in terms of the individual players, let's go through them. Now let's switch this to general info. Uh, and let's do it by club. So we'll go through all the players now and see how how big of an influence they had on their teams. So we had Winston Reid, who went to Arsenal as one of their centre-backs. Did he play a lot? He didn't play an awful amount. 20 games overall, 6.86 rating. Three assists as well, which isn't too bad. So not a bad signing for them in the end. Uh, did the job as a bit of a backup centre-back. Um, Sami Kadira. Let's see. He had 18 assists in the league. Oh, hello. 44 appearances in all competitions. 6 goals, 21 assists. 7.46 average rating. That is a phenomenal effort. Uh, will, does it give you positions anymore? Um, like in terms of what, what games they played and what positions. Um, no. I don't think we're going to find it in this. Positions. Nah. Do, do, doesn't look like it, unfortunately. Um, don't know where, because you used to be able to see their positions. But anyway, it, it does seem that it, I think he's playing in the central midfield. And that is a terrific performance from Kadira, really um, giving Arsenal that necessary kick forward. And possibly it might only take somebody like Kadira in real life to give them that little kick. Uh, next is Carles Gill. Did he do anything in Aston Villa? No. Okay. Now that is extremely disappointing. Four, one, one start and three appearances off the bench in the whole season. 6.38 rating. That is a bit of a flop, if you ask me. And the other guy from Villa was Scott Sinclair, but he was on a loan deal. Um, so where is he going to be? He's going to be a Man City. There he is. Uh, how did he do for Villa? Ooh, he played a lot more games, but debatable whether he was actually helping the team or disimproving the team. 33, 36 appearances, actually, in all competitions. One goal, one assist from attacking midfield. Oh, God, that is shocking from Scott Sinclair. That really is. That's a, a terrible... Terrible season. Uh, that really hasn't helped Bill as, of course, they have gone down. So it kind of sums it all up, I suppose. Uh, Burnley. We've got Troy Deeney. We've already seen he scored 19 league goals. Um, 19 goals in 36 games. Also two assists. Only a 6.98 average rating. So obviously wasn't doing much else on the park. But banging in those crucial goals, which really have kept Burnley up. If we go back to the Premier League... 54 goals, 19 of them came from him. If he wasn't there, they would only score around 35, and they would have definitely been relegated. So he's been a real um, coup for for Burnley. So uh, that's good to see. And Burnley surviving is also good to see. Uh, moving on to Chelsea, Raphael Varane, the only guy we brought, they got um, yeah, solid enough season in all competitions was... Mostly a first-team player, which I was actually debating a little bit whether he'd actually walk into the team ahead of Terry and Cahill. Obviously did so. Uh, 38 appearances in all competitions, just two assists, but six player of the matches, and an average rating of 7.5. That is extremely impressive from an ex extremely impressive centre-back, though, to be fair to that guy. Um, 22 years old, and he's already looking like that, and you, you find it hard to argue with that in real life. He is a stunning centre-back. And one to really keep your eyes open for. So, good stuff from him. Um, Crystal Palace, of course, they were one of the teams to get relegated, so obviously it didn't go too well. Neil Taylor, let's have a look-see. Uh, how did he manage to do? 
Not too bad. He played an awful lot of games. Uh, 41 appearances in all competitions. 5 assists, 5, five player of the matches. Uh, 6.9 rating overall, so not too bad, actually. For a team that got relegated, that's a fairly decent um, return from a full-back. But, of course, they did get relegated and he, did, he wasn't able to help them stay up. So, unfortunately, it didn't work out for Neil there. He did actually quite well, though. Let's see, did Yaya Sonogo have any bearing on Crystal Palace? Oh, no, he did not. One start and six appearances off the bench in all competitions. Zero goals, zero assists, 6.32 average rating. That is harsh. That is not good at all. So, that's disappointing. So, Sonogo had no impact whatsoever on Crystal Palace, which is... Disappointing, because that's obviously one of the reasons why they've gone down. They didn't seem to score many goals. He wasn't scoring them for them. And that just means it, it it's going to all over for Palace. They've gone down, and he hasn't really um, changed it around for them, which I was looking for him to be able to do, but he, could, he couldn't do it. Next man is, we're on to, next club even, is on to Everton. And Christian Rodriguez, the left winger, how many games did he play Got another guy who was fringe. Six starts and eight appearances in all competitions. Did he have a few injuries? He had a two-month injury and then a seven-day injury. So not, no, not, he didn't really have many injuries. But nonetheless, didn't really seem to get a run of games. One goal, three assists. So not too bad. A 7.04 average rating overall. So not a bad little uh, return from the minimal games he played. But obviously just couldn't fit into the team at Everton. And the other guy at Everton was Adnan Yanazai. So let's have a look-see. Uh, he's most likely returned to Man U. There he is. How did he do? Ah. Oh. Now that is a little bit odd. Did he have any injuries? Okay, he had a lot of injuries. A four-month injury sustained in October. Seven days, ten days, seven days. So he was constantly getting injured. I would explain only 20 appearances in all competitions. Seven goals for them, but five of them came in the Europa League. 6.85 average rating overall, but a season definitely hampered by injuries for Yanazai. So uh, you can't look into that one too much, because I think he would have... I was thinking, because surely he, he could make it into the Everton side. He obviously was, but just uh, didn't, didn't get the run of luck, I think, with the injuries. He didn't get the rub of the green. Uh, for him, and it, it was a disappointing season for him. Next up we have Hull. They managed to scrape survival, didn't they? So let's have a look-see. And Mohamed Salah was their first guy on loan. How did he manage to do? Okay, not a great see Again, injuries, any? Six days and nine days, so no, actually, he just didn't really fit into the team at all. Four starts, eight off the bench in all competitions. Two goals, one assist, 6.74 rating. Yeah, so a disappointing loan spell from Salah. He really didn't have the um, sort of effect I thought he might at all. I thought he would be a little more impressive than that. And the other one was Rudy Gasted going to hold. Did he manage to get... Um, a decent enough season. Uh, he did, actually. He got a fair amount of games. And uh, not heaps, though. Again, we, he picked up a four-week injury in November time. So, I suppose that was a month of him out of action. Uh, 27 appearances in all competitions. 20 starts, 7 off the bench. 12 goals, 4 assists. Not a bad little return for him. 6.99 average rating overall as well. Um... So again, not a bad return, just giving the Hull, I think, a few, um, just a few more goals that they probably needed, just to add on to their initial goal scorers like Jelovic and uh, people like that. I'm actually going to have a look, see, Sonny Aluko was actually their top scorer with 14, Hernandez also got 10, Snodgrass 8, and Jelovic got 7. So overall, they kind of collectively just about got enough goals to keep themselves up. Leicester now, they were a bit of a surprise package, finishing up in 14th spot. Let's see how did the new guys do. Andre Kramaric. Yeah, decent enough season at it first time round. Um, 
not setting the world alight. 38 appearances overall, 37 starts, only one off the bench. 12 goals, one, 12 goals, zero assists, actually. Uh, 6.75 rating, so not... He didn't seem to do too much else on the pitch, but he did manage to bag 12 very important goals for Leicester, which could, in the long run, have kept them up. Same with Shinji Okazaki. Did he did the same sort of... Uh, same sort of stuff. He was in a similar enough position. Yeah, again, played a lot of games. Uh, 42 appearances for him in all competitions. 7 goals, 7 assists. So not a bad return either for him. 6.84 rating. Again, not again setting the world alight. But obviously, kind of collective performances from Leicester have managed to keep them up. Did Ojoa have a decent season? No, actually, Cromarch was their top scorer. And Vardy got 11. Okazaki was next with 7. And Aloha had only got 6. But Anthony uh, Knockhart had a really good season. There were 12 assists, so that obviously helped them along the way to securing survival. Next up is Liverpool. How did they do? Both of their players are currently injured. Fabian Delph, did he ever get a run of games? No. Ah, well, that's a bit odd. Now, let's have a look again, see if any injury is going to really hamper them. Okay, there was. Uh, two weeks, five weeks, three weeks, three months, and ten days. So he's been actually very injury prone, and you can see why he maybe didn't get a necessary spell in the game because he was constantly injured. Three appearances, o no, five appearances overall. Three starts, two off the bench, three assists in the that time. Those seven point oh seven rating, including two assists in one game and two sub appearances in the league which isn't actually too bad so he didn't he did seem to play quite well when he was brought on but again another very injury hampered season for one of our players Petr Cech I'd be hoping if he did if he kept injury free did he no he didn't either so they've had a real bad time of it uh, two weeks two days two weeks five days 11 days 10 days and four months is current injury and he's going to be back in around two to five weeks. So he's he picked up a um, what did he pick up? A broken leg in around January time, which has ruled him out for the rest of the season. It looked as if he was the first team keeper up until then. Twenty two appearances, only conceding nineteen, ten clean sheets, and a seven point three nine average rating overall. A fairly decent return from Petr Cech, uh, but that. For a uh, broken leg injury sustained right at the end of January has really hampered his progress at Liverpool, which is a bit of a kick in the teeth for them, I have to say. But nonetheless, he did play well, or did seem to play well, when um, he wasn't injured. Wilfred Bonney, now this is an interesting one. Did he pull off the form that he has executed with Chelsea or with Swansea in real life, uh, and did he manage to bring it to Man City? And overall, he did so, yes. Overall, he played 46 games in all competitions. 31 starts, 15 off the bench. 27 goals with one assist in that. With a 7.19 average rating. Not too bad at all. Also collecting 14 handy goals in the league. Uh, I wonder what City... Did they do anything in Champions League? Now, this would be first time I'd ever look at something like this. Um... Capital One, they got to the final. Oh no, they got knocked out of the Champions League in the group stages. That's not good. But then won Europa. They won the Capital One Cup. They got to the final. And they won actually the Europa League. So that's obviously where most of his goals seemingly came from. And they got to the final of the FA Cup. But lost a man new. So a very productive season for City. A treble win. Capital One, Premier League and Europa League. A very good season of it for uh, Man City. And it seemed that Boney was instrumental in definitely the Capital One and Europa League wins especially. Next we move on to Man U. Did they have the same look? Nathaniel Klein. Oh, he's currently transfer listed. That's not a good sign. And you could probably see why. Not playing an awful lot of games. Seven starts, three off the bench, a 6.38 average rating, a real disappointing season for Klein, just didn't get into the team, and um, the less said the better, really, for him. Matt Hummels, I doubt he had the same problems, he certainly did not, 45 appearances in all competitions, three goals, four assists, five player of the matches, 
and a 7.6 average rating there. That is quality stuff from a quality defender in mats. Next up, we have QPR and Paul Jose Mpoku. I would doubt if he's actually done anything this year, if he's played any games. And I'd be right. One appearance off the bench in the whole season. 6.3 in that. Not a productive season for Mpoku. Did he have any injuries? Not really. Two weeks, eight days and eight days. So not big injuries. He just didn't really get a stab at it. Amara Zarati. Uh, let's have a look. I suspect he did quite well. And I'd be right to suspect so. 17 goals in 33 league games. 18 in all competitions. Really propelling QPR to that 11th spot. Berth and an excellent, excellent signing for them. And that was a, that was a top top little loan spell for Zarate. And one of the few guys who's really done it so far. While we've gone through this list. Um, it has... Uh, in alphabetical order next is Southampton but we'll, we'll just quickly do Swansea here because it's here for us and uh, Nelson Oliveira um, how did he do? he's back at Benfica now he didn't have a bad little um, season at Swansea 13 starts, 16 off the bench 11 goals, 1 assist, 6.9 average rating a handy enough return for him I didn't even bother to actually put Matt Grimes on the uh, short list because I really doubted that he'd go anywhere. Did he go out on loan or did he do anything? He went on loan to Cheltenham for four games. That shows you where he was at. Yeah, so he's, According to the game, Matt Grimes might look like a little bit of a waste of money for Swansea. Anyway, moving on to Southampton and we'll have to go back up to find Elia. Egero Elia. Did he do quite well? No, he didn't. 10 starts, 9 off the bench, 1 goal, 0 assists, 6.72 average rating, a season to forget for the winger. Yeah, a real poor, piss poor season for him. And I think he'll be looking to uh, put that to the back of the memory pretty quickly. Bruno Martins Indy, um, did he have a solid enough season? Usually does quite well on Football Manager, and t this season was no different. 31 appearances in all competitions, 4 goals, 1 assist, 7.01 average rating. Not a bad little return for him. Uh, Philip Walsheed for Stoke. Uh, didn't really get a run of games. He got a fair amount though. 25 in all competitions, 7 off the bench. 1 assist, no goal, 6.87 average rating. So a solid enough performance from the centre-back. Couldn't really ask for too much more. Decent rotation sort of guy. Jermaine Defoe, now we already saw earlier that he played all 38 games. Did he manage to score? Did he bring the Defoe magic touch? Oh, he did. That is a tasty season from Jermaine Defoe. 40 appearances in all competitions, 19 goals, 1 assist. 6.82 average rating, so he obviously wasn't doing anything apart from scoring. But he did score. And ultimately, he has probably kept Sunderland up when you look at it. He finished 15th. If they didn't have his goals, they would have been heading back down. So, a top effort from Defoe, because he's pretty much single-handedly kept them in the league. Next, we move on to Spurs. Hector Moreno, did he manage to have a decent season? Not bad. He was more of a slight rotation option. Uh, they obviously were constantly rotating in Spurs side. 37 appearances in all competitions, but you've got to... Uh, take into fact that 10 of those games were in the Europa League. 5 assists and a 7.09 average rating. So a real uh, fairly top effort from the 27-year-old central defender. Uh, solid enough and giving them extra stability at the back for Spurs. Although they did underperform this year. Only 8th spot. So didn't obviously have uh, enough of a difference really for Spurs. And Saito Berahino, did he manage to get anything on the board? Not really. He was, only a, he was definitely a rotation option. Seven starts, 14 off the bench. Four goals, one assist, 6.73 average rating overall. Not the best season for a youngster. Uh, not, he's slightly underrated on game, I think, though. He's not, um, not the same player on game, definitely, than the one that is in real life at the moment. He was a bit of a predator in the box. Moving on to West Brom, Peter Crouch. Did he get a bit of the Crouch magic? Not much of it. Obviously, he's aging. 
Uh, eight starts, ten off the bench, seven goals, uh, zero assists, 6.76 average rating. So he still managed to stump up seven goals, though, in all competitions, five in the league. But he just, he, he's getting on, it's probably, it's finally too, kind of too long for a crouch. 34 years of age, um, the age is certainly catching up with him, obviously, in game. Darren Fletcher. Of course, West Brom got relegated, so they di didn't didn't do enough. These two guys, apparently, Darren Fletcher. Um, did he have a few injuries? Possibly. Uh, six days and four weeks, so he got a, a month injury at one stage. Apart from that, not too much. So he he was just a bit on the fringe, really. Twenty five appearances in all competitions, five off the bench though. Six assists, seven point two two average rating overall. So he did actually quite solid when he played, but obviously not. Uh, he, Again, as I said before, just not enough to keep West Brom up as they went down by three points. And lastly, West Brom, or West Ham even, which was Donnell Henry, and I suspect he hasn't played a game. And I'd be right to su suspect that. Well, no, well, he's played a few actually. Seven starts, ten off the bench, but 6.41 average rating. That is a bit cringeworthy if you're asking me. Anyway, um, I think that's all of them. Wait, I haven't done Newcastle at all because Newcastle's both of Newcastle's players were loanees, so we're gonna have to quickly go through that. Kurt Zuma, um, did he manage to get a few games? No. Oh my goodness, he had a. Five week injury, a four week injury in two months. So again, another injury hampered year for one of our players. We don't seem to be really getting uh, the luck in this save, but he didn't play a single game for Newcastle. Possibly though, they could have definitely uh, terminated his loan after one of those injuries though. So maybe uh, he, he, didn't, he didn't last the full season at Newcastle. He mightn't have done so, but he didn't have any effect. And Stefan Jovetic, he's currently injured as well. For four to five weeks, injury wise, what's he looking like? Again, a lot of injuries. Bloody hell. Six days, seven days, three weeks, three months, two weeks, six days, ten days, eleven days. So, a lot of injuries for Jovtic. Did he manage to get any games under his belt in between then and now? He got a few. Eleven starts, two off the bench, three goals, four assists, 7.12. So, it was actually, he did look quite handy, Jovtic, but just didn't. Um, didn't really get again the luck with the injuries which has really suffered with a lot of our players uh, which is a little bit disappointing kind of ruins it well no it doesn't ruin it but um, I suppose doesn't make it that even a playing field if we just have a look at the overall stats this is going to be the last thing I'll show in this episode so uh, most appearances overall is Bonnie uh, followed by Hummels then Kadira Okazaki and Taylor. Top goal scorer is definitely Bonnie with 27. And Defoe with 19. Dini with 19. Kramarch and Gested with 12 each. Provider, Kadira with 21. Okazaki with 7. Fletcher 6. Taylor 5. Moreno 5. Player of the match, Varane got 6. Taylor Hummels with 5. Dini with 4. Pass completion, not that that really matters. Fletcher with 89%. Tackle ratio, um, Winston Reed 14.3. Dribbles per game. Berahino with 11.31. Yeah, these are those ones are quite irrelevant st statistics, really. Uh, shots on target ratio: Donnell Henry 67%, Gusted 60, Bonnie 54, and top average rating was Mats Hummels with 7.6, Varane 7.5, Kadir 7.46, and Czech 7.39. So overall, we can probably conclude from this little experiment that Wilfred Bonnie might end up being a handy a little signing for Manchester City and also if the likes of Deeney went to Burnley and possibly even Defoe to Sunderland because that has, has actually happened uh, they might be nifty signings for those teams and give them the necessary goals um, to really survive the drop as for as it's shown unfortunately Villa will need a bit more than just Carlos Gill coming in in the uh, January window for them to get enough goals to stay up. A sorry state of affair in game and a sorry state of affair in real life. 
And with that ends today's episode. As always, leave comments or suggestions in the in the comments to keep this kind of series going. If, if of course, you want to keep the series going. Uh, and uh, drop the video a like if you enjoyed it. And as always, subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. I'll see you guys later. Bye.